All right, today's an interesting one because today we're talking about Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft, historical revisionism, and the Japanese government. There's more, a lot more, but the hook is that a wildly popular gaming franchise, that being Assassin's Creed, after a series of very unfortunate decisions, is actively being accused of cultural invasion, a problem that an official representative is now bringing in front of the Japanese Diete, which is their parliamentary government. His name, the representative, is Satoshi Hamada, and I'll get to that part later on, but the gist of it is that an entire historical narrative was crafted over the span of about nine years, only to now be heavily disputed at the expense of a multi-billion dollar franchise which attempted to build its latest entry almost exclusively off the back of a highly suspect body of work. In essence, Ubisoft has made their next entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise the focal point of a brewing international scandal. Great job. This is where I have to go through a sort of narrative arc, so to speak, and give the underlying context of the situation before expanding on how it all exactly fell apart. Assassin's Creed is one of the top grossing video game franchises of all time. It's on the top three, or the top five, mind you, and it pales in comparison to franchises like Pokemon or Mario. But having surpassed 200 million copies sold with $4.6 billion total revenue, it's one of the most successful entertainment properties on Earth with no signs of slowing down. Just to highlight that point, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the latest entry before Shadows, which is the one we're talking about today, sold over 20 million separate copies, making it the highest grossing entry in the series, period. As a franchise, like it or not, personally being a diehard fan of the original trilogy with main character Ezio, Assassin's Creed is more successful now than ever before, making it a focal point in the video game landscape as Ubisoft progressively increases their marketing and development budgets year after year after year, with notable success while doing so. Sure, they have their failures at times, but Assassin's Creed isn't one of them, and barring any sort of unexpected consequences, this latest entry, that being Shadows, would seem very likely to continue that trend. Maybe. For anyone who isn't already aware, Assassin's Creed Shadows is set in feudal Japan, which really isn't surprising at all after a game called Ghost of Tsushima basically copied the formula and sold almost 10 million copies over four years as a PlayStation exclusive. People have been asking for a game about feudal Japan. Ubisoft have progressively expanded their repertoire of locations for the franchise, and all things considered, it seems like a perfect time for the franchise to make that jump. However, if you're going to make a Japanese-themed game, you probably shouldn't piss off Japanese people, and that's where Ubisoft epically dropped the ball. In May of 2024, Ubisoft unveiled the official trailer for the game, and pretty much immediately afterward, things started to get a little bit weird. The story was set to feature two main protagonists, one male, one female, like before, but the male protagonist was determined to be Yasuke, who is, quote, the first black samurai and referred to elsewhere as the first foreign-born samurai as well. This is where the controversy starts, because according to an interview with game director Charles Benoit, conducted in Xbox GameWire, quote, We're at the end of Sengoku era, in a turning point of Japan history. Assassin's Creed is well known for its depiction of the history and accurate recreation of the world, and it's what players can expect with Assassin's Creed Shadows. We're showing real historical figures, such as Oda Nobunaga and a lot of events that happened during that time, so you're not only playing in feudal Japan, but learning about this fantastic time period. Also, we're giving the opportunity to the players to live not just one, but the two best fantasies of Japan, the samurai and the shinobi, end quote. On its face, that's pretty good. However, opinions rapidly took a turn for the worse when the true atmosphere of the game started taking shape, with examples like this cropping up from the gameplay trailer and getting plastered all over online messaging boards and social media. Not while I have breath in my lungs and a blade in my head. I said kill him. I'll wash away his failure with your blood. For anyone who didn't notice there, the background track is basically hip-hop-infused Asian battle music, which absolutely does not match the time period, the atmosphere, or the subject matter, except for one particular way. I'll skip over the smaller stuff here and get right to the main issues, but the general consensus around this game began to rapidly sour, especially in mainland Japan. See, Yasuke, the main protagonist and the, quote, first African samurai, has rapidly ascended the rungs of popularity and recognition in the West, but not so much elsewhere in the world. Yasuke is the subject of a Netflix animated series now. He has multiple media mentions. There's a Broadway show about him, even, slated for 2026. And he also shows up in other video games as well, like a boss fight in Neo 2, 
called the Obsidian Samurai. But pretty much all of that recognition stems from a particular historian, a historian named Thomas Lockley. This is where things get strange. Pretty much every modern Western mention of Yasuke tracks back directly in some capacity to Thomas Lockley. For the prior examples, I even gave myself the Smithsonian article referring to Yasuke as the first black samurai, quotes Lockley directly, referencing his book, and that very same book, released in 2019, is the basis for almost every modern depiction of Yasuke that I could even find. Thomas Lockley is the premier historian associated with Yasuke, but the incredible popularity of Assassin's Creed and the anger at inaccurate portrayal of Japanese feudal society has kicked off a controversy that may undermine Lockley's entire body of work, as it forces Ubisoft to openly apologize and causes a never-ending debate online about whether or not Yasuke was ever even really a samurai. Just to get this out of the way right now, I don't personally have a stake in all of this. Assassin's Creed, to put it very bluntly, has never been tied to reality in my mind, and for a perfect example, we can look at Assassin's Creed 3, which conveniently took place in revolutionary America. Yeah, I don't actually think that the half-Mohawk Indian assassin fought side by side with George Washington to recover an alien object. I'm not going to sit here and complain about historical accuracy when the entire franchise is about a secret league of athletically superpowered time travelers fighting another secret society over extraterrestrial artifacts. Frankly, the fact that Yasuke existed as a sort of blank slate historical character that was in fact a real person but we don't know all that much about him kind of makes him perfect as a narrative blank canvas, especially when he existed in close proximity to significant historical events. However, that's my personal opinion, and when it comes to Thomas Lockley, personal opinion goes entirely out the window. Hopefully everyone can follow along with this part. I'll do my best to make it as straightforward as possible. Yasuke, increasingly popular in Western media with growing recognition across entertainment properties, didn't always hold the same level of recognition. Right now, if you go to his Wikipedia page, there's a pretty sizable entry, but back in 2014, the entry was just a tiny fraction of the size. Except, if you go to the edit history for his Wikipedia page, you find something very interesting, and that is a particular user named Totori Tom, who has made sizable edits to the page, the sources, and the information contained within it. From one of his larger edits, quote, This is the second in a series of edits I will carry out following a study of his life and times. All will be properly referenced when I get the chance, end quote. And if you look at the actual profile of Totori Tom, you see, quote, Totori Tom is Thomas Lockley, a faculty member at Nihon University College of Law, Tokyo, Japan. His interests are primarily Japanese history related, end quote. That may seem innocent for the moment, or insignificant rather, because any profile on Wikipedia can write anything it wants in the bio section. But Thomas Lockley is listed on the Nihon University faculty page, and the account Totori Tom was adding his papers and his book as page sources before the work was even published. Here's where it gets really strange. Speaking to Time magazine discussing the life of Yasuke in reference to the Netflix anime series, Lockley had this to say, quote, There's no record, but tradition holds it that Yasuke was the one who took Nobunaga's head to save it from the enemy. Continuing later, Yasuke, therefore, by escaping with the head, could have been seen and has been seen as changing Japanese history, end quote. That's no small thing. He acknowledges, in the briefest of ways possible, that there's no actual evidence, but goes on to say that Yasuke has been seen as changing Japanese history. However, if you look at the Japanese version of his book, not the English version, it holds an entirely different atmosphere. Please understand I don't speak Japanese, nor could I find someone who can translate for me at this particular time, so I used Google and various different transcription tools. These are highly imperfect, but the differences here are so profound, I don't see how they could possibly fit together based purely on mistranslation by Google, so here it is. If you're capable of a better translation, please feel free to drop it down below in the comment section. Quote, According to a family claiming to be descendants of the Oda clan, Yasuke is said to have smuggled Nobunaga's head and sword out of Honaji Temple to prevent them from falling into enemy hands. Further down, there are several problems with this theory. First, no source, whether Yasuke was involved or not, mentions where Nobunaga's head ended up or not. Froyce's letter is the only source that mentions Yasuke's participation in the battle, but it also makes no mention of Nobunaga's head. If Yasuke had brought the head back to Nanbanji, Froyce would have mentioned it. Second, escaping from the middle of a burning temple surrounded by many enemy soldiers would have been extremely difficult without the added task of carrying, in addition to one's weapons, an incredibly large and unwieldy object, a human head. End quote. 
That is a very different tone than what he puts forward in Time magazine. When publishing for a Japanese audience, he expresses that it's incredibly unlikely to be true, and highlights his own doubt about the subject matter. But when talking to a Western audience, he says that Yasuke, quote, has been seen as changing Japanese history. Hopefully, everyone can kind of see the problem. As if that's not enough, and the tipping point, at least for me, on Lockley's own credibility, in May of 2024, an article and interview in the Japan Times was published pertaining to the controversy around whether or not Yasuke was ever even a samurai at all, which said, quote, Most telling to Lockley, however, is that no reputable Japanese historian has raised doubts about Yasuke's samurai bona fides, including Sakujin Kurino, who served as a fact-checker for African Samurai and is one of the country's foremost experts on the 1582 Honoji incident, for which Yasuke was believed to be present, end quote. That's a very big deal. One of the country's foremost experts on the 1582 Honoji incident, and he was a fact-checker for Lockley's book over the authenticity of Yasuke being a samurai with no disputes? That's pretty important. Except, it's a lie. Sakujin Karino, publicly on Twitter, published a statement that read, quote, When the Japanese version of Nobunaga and Yasuke, Oda Publishing, based on the original work by Thomas Lockley, was published in 2017, the translator, Yoshiko Fuji, asked me to read it and give my opinion, so I gave a few opinions. It was just that, and it wasn't something as grand as a fact check, end quote. After which the Japan Times updated their article, removing the claim by Lockley, that Sakujin Karino had served as a fact-checker for African Samurai. One is a fluke, two is a coincidence, three is a pattern. Thomas Lockley appears to have been editing the Yasuke Wikipedia page as far back as 2015, citing his own work, which had not even been published yet. He appears to be telling different versions of historical events, at the very least portraying them in radically different ways, depending on his audience, Western versus Japanese, and he appears to have directly lied about the authenticity of his book, using an appeal to authority, as it's called, by claiming a certain expert fact-checked that work before the expert themselves had to come out and clarify that was not true, really. One is a fluke, two is a coincidence, three is a pattern. Just in case for anyone still on the fence, here is Lockley in his own words discussing the book that he wrote. Shout out to Vast Establishment on Reddit for discovering this particular interview. This new book of yours might read too many like a novel, but uh, to my understanding, you're not a novelist? No, I'm not. Um, I did uh, originally write an academic book of this, which was published in Japanese. And um, that was, I think, 2017. So the book which you would find in front of you, African Samurai, is a much more um, readable version, the less academic far more narrative um though it's still based on the exact factual history it's just simply not full of uh references and other things like that just to recap that he says quote the book which you find in front of you is a much more readable version less academic far more narrative though still based on the exact factual history however later on when the host uh jing yi li who is a phd candidate cultural historian of 19th century japan go figure questions the biography, referring to it as more historical fiction, he replies by just brushing it off immediately. And as we talked about earlier, many may read this book as a novel because of, well, apart from the very specific um, historic background, there's also a lot of depictions of the characters, um, um, I guess, yeah. inner development. Um, yeah. But its yeah. category on Amazon and Goodreads is biography. Yeah. Um, well, personally, I feel like it's more of a historical fiction. So how would you define the nature of this book? Well, there's very, very little there which is actually fiction. There are various scenes which were added because we knew that they might have happened. There's one scene where uh, Yasuke is, is watching a hawking session uh, and we know that Nobunaga was, was almost obsessed by hawking and, and hunting with birds. So therefore it's highly likely, I mean, we can say probably we're 99% sure that Yasuke would have seen that. So we did make up the occasional scene just to give a little bit of atmosphere, if you like. 
I should clarify here, Thomas Lockley, in the aftermath of this new scrutiny, seems to have fully deleted all of his social media profiles. He has distanced himself entirely from the controversy, but the controversy is not done with him. Posted by Satoshi Hamada as a serving member of the House of Councillors in Japan, which is the upper portion of the Diete, though he seems to be more like a fringe candidate than anything else, rather than a central figure, quote, We're looking for your feedback. We were consulted by a French game company about a historical alteration of Japan. The content of the consultation is shared below in images. We have also quoted a post that appears to point out the problem with the game in question. We would like to hear your specific requests and opinions. Further down, thanks for the information about Assassin's Creed Shadows and Yasuke. Keep your research focused. Primary source information on Yasuke, Yasuke information in Thomas Lockley's book. Please request the National Diete Library to investigate this matter. Secretaries of Satoshi Hamada's office, end quote. There it is. Ubisoft, with Assassin's Creed Shadows, has decided to focus a portion of their newest title on a character named Yasuke. But Yasuke, despite many people vehemently claiming that he was in fact a samurai, is not the subject of historical consensus. Many experts believe he was merely a retainer or a servant or some form of lesser caste, while others, namely Thomas Lockley in particular, assert that he was not only a samurai but a legendary samurai that was, quote, been seen as changing Japanese history, end quote. Meanwhile, Ubisoft, presumably relying on his work as one of the narrative pillars here, given that the game centers on Yasuke as an active samurai who participated in a lot of combat routinely, and Thomas Lockley is the only person pushing him forward as a hero story from an academic perspective in Japanese history, has now had to issue an apology that reads, quote, We have put significant effort into ensuring an immersive and respectful representation of feudal Japan. However, our intention has never been to present any of our Assassin's Creed games, including Assassin's Creed Shadows, as factual representations of history or historical characters, end quote. And yet, this is the same company, once again referencing the Xbox GameWire interview, that said they are showing real historical figures, so you're not only playing in feudal Japan, but also learning about this fantastic time period. Why would you be learning from things if they're telling fictional stories? Like, this doesn't jive. To be perfectly clear, I can actually see why they chose a narrative blank slate for the purpose of storytelling. I don't personally look at Assassin's Creed and think, where's the historical accuracy? But when you make a game about a certain culture, which Assassin's Creed has routinely done, why would you choose the only example of a samurai who isn't even agreed on as being a samurai as your main character, and then put a cringy hip-hop filter over that culture's music? Why would you make it so that when Assassin's Creed is finally set in Japan, you don't even play as a Japanese warrior half of the time, instead focusing on an outsider who brutally slaughters real Japanese samurai all over the open world, when every single previous Assassin's Creed game focused on a character that actually related to the culture of origin. In the Revolutionary War, the assassin was half Mohawk. In the original trilogy, Ezio Auditore was Italian. In Valhalla, Ivor was a Viking, etc., etc. Why are you breaking that trend now? At the end of the day, the Yasuke disaster is the story of a historian who centered his entire body of work on portraying a little-known Japanese figure as some sort of legendary hero, twisting his words all over the place depending on who was in the audience at that particular time. And Ubisoft went and made half of a AAA game about it. In response, scholars, critics, regular players, pretty much everybody online, has been weighing in on whether or not his character was ever really a samurai, whether or not he should be the main focus of the game, and why Ubisoft might have made all of these creatively baffling decisions in the first place, but at the end of the day, I don't really have those answers. My opinion? Ubisoft wanted to score some diversity points. That's really just what it boils down to. Yasuke happened to fit a pretty convenient narrative template while also scoring them those diversity points, and allow them a real historical figure who stands out dramatically in feudal Japan for some of the wrong reasons if you take this controversy at face value, and they use that as their starting point, and unwittingly rope themselves into a culture war for all, all of the wrong reasons at the worst possible time, as people accuse each other of either rewriting history maliciously or being viciously racist, depending on which side of the political aisle you're on. That's it. That is the Yasuke controversy explained, and none of it will likely impact the game at all, which is almost certainly going to sell between 10 and 20 million copies or more, becoming wildly successful regardless of what we talk about today. That's just kind of how the world works now, but now you know the story. If you want to support the channel, there's links down below, a special VPN deal. Everybody could use that for those interested. Patreon and locals if you support what I do and want to financially support future videos. 
and more, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, question everything, and have a nice night.